For as long as I have sewn an A. Bernina sewing machine, I have always needed to clean and lubricate it on a regular basis. Now, if this is your first Bernina with the new jumbo bobbin, we're gonna help you be successful every time you sit down to sew by showing you what to do each day. So each day I sew, I put a little drop of oil after doing a little cleaning. So there's a brush that comes with your machine. The oil that is for this machine is very specific, so do get it from your local Bernina store. If you don't already have a pair of tweezers, this is the one that came with my Bernina L890 serger. So if you want a wonderful pair of tweezers, just buy a serger, they come free. Or it's a uh, it's like a $6,000 pair of tweezers and the serger comes free, however you want to think of that. But one of the things that people don't do is realize the key to really keeping this machine in top running condition. We have also done over 100 videos on the Bernina 790 Plus, which by the way, is a very similar machine to the 790 Pro. There's gonna be a link in the description where you can click and start binge watching all the videos on how to master this machine inside and out. Plus, we have online courses to help you as well. While you're watching these videos, I only ask you one thing, that you click like every time you watch a video and make sure you click the subscribe button so you're updated anytime that we post new videos. So I'm gonna show you first how to clean and oil this machine. So do this every day. And then we're also going to explain a little bit more about having your machine serviced on an annual basis. So sewing machines truly need all that attention inside because there's a lot of moving parts that you and I don't see. Um, the only part that we are asked to take care of is that, that bobbin area. And the reason for it is because your linty fabrics, your fleeces, your flannels, cottons, battings, and everything in between are all going to kind of settle down underneath this throat plate, down where the feed dogs are, down where the bobbin is. And some thread is linty too. So if you are finding that you're using a lot of linty thread and it's really kind of fluffing up up here at the top of your needle and you're always kind of like wiping it off, maybe it's time to check some of the quality of thread that you're choosing to put in this machine. So higher quality threads don't have as much lint. Um, also too, if you run into problems, change threads, make sure that it's serviced. Those are things. And then of course the needle is so key for the project you're working on. So a lot of times when people reach out and they're saying, why is my machine not working? These are the steps that we give them. So if you follow along, you should be golden as you sit down to stitch each time on this machine. Especially if you're doing embroidery in combination with sewing, you're putting a lot of stitching time on your machines, keep that machine lubricated well. I know these jumbo bobbins <laughs> hold so much thread these days, so one of the things to keep in mind is, you know, some people say, oh, well, I do it every three to five bobbins. Just remember those bobbins on their machines are much smaller, and that is not the case. You can't use that same equation on this machine because we're talking about every one or two bobbins is a lot of stitching. Okay, so I know the manual is going to tell you to turn off the machine, um, which by the way, that turns off all your lights. So if you like the, the lighting to help you with all of this, all you have to do is unplug your foot control and it kind of eliminates you um, running the machine. Okay, so um, if you haven't changed your needle, let's go ahead and just take the screwdriver out. That's that small, small one. And let's go ahead and just remove Remove the needle now. That also makes sure you don't stab yourself as you're kind of working down in this area. And if you need to, it's probably time for a new needle. So let's go ahead and plan to switch out that. Take off your foot. And I am a fan of the sewing table, especially when I'm not working in a sewing cabinet. So go ahead and slide that off. Next, let's open up the bobbin case door and take the bobbin out. So just go ahead and push on the right side of the bobbin on that silver line, and then that just pops that out. Next, a super easy stitch plate with no screws, yay! All you have to do is push down on this back corner where the little bullseye is. You can push down, maybe push down with a second finger on top of that, and then just lift this up. This will go back in almost as easy when you're done. You're gonna just line up the back part of that stitch plate with the back part of the machine, and then just push down hard until it goes in nice and flush. That way you know it's in there perfect. So sometimes I'll use my thumbs, one thumb on top of the second thumb, and that removes that 
easily. And you'll probably find that if you are seeing any threads in this area, that's where the thread, thread cutter is. And so we'll use those tweezers to kind of take out any threads that you see. Um, a key, don't use canned air. So that just blows more in. There's a lot of places you don't want more lint. So everything that we're gonna do is we're gonna brush it out. You can use a small miniature vacuum attachment. Those are great to pull things out as well. And then let's get into the bobbin uh, hook area. This little lever off to the left, push it to the left and it will release the race and then reach into the spindle. This is magnetic, so when you pull it, it's just gonna release it all together, and that is where your bobbin sits. It's also where lint will gather, and also down in here, lint is gonna gather. So you're gonna start and take your brush and get everything brushed out of there completely. Now for lubrication. Now just a reminder that you are gonna see inside here a couple places that look like lint, and the <laughs> Those are not lint, do not pull that out with those new fancy tweezers that you have. That is where we're actually going to put a little drop of oil on both of those sides there. And that is part of the lubricating process. So we're gonna oil one and two, and then I'm also gonna put a couple drops of oil around the outside perimeter of the hook. You could also come in here and put a couple drops, just, it's kind of an either or, you don't need them both, but kind of the same place where this little part uh, runs as it is creating the stitch. But just kind of keep in mind that there's little guys in here. And then, like I said, I just kind of put a couple drops around the edge. And again, after I've done all my cleaning, and I'm just gonna kind of give it a little heads up or a head start as it's going to, once it starts to stitch, that goes metal against metal and that's what keeps everything stitching quietly. And also, if you have some stitches, it kind of looks like it grabs or gives you an extra little loop from time to time. Again, that is definitely where you wanna come in and make sure that you've added the oil to the inside and the outside of the hook. After you're sure that all the little areas have no more lint, including this little silver part on the side, sometimes this is where you get um, some threads caught on if you hadn't threaded the top correctly, and then you sew and threads get caught down here. Just check that part um, on either side and make sure there's no thread behind there. I know if it's black thread, that means you just wanna make sure to get it out. Okay, the last thing is, is how do you get this back in? So I'm gonna point, there is a circle or a hole right there on the inside of the hook. And there is also a silver dot on the back side of the machine area. Those two end up lining up. But sometimes people have trouble kind of getting that in there. Even though I said it's magnetic, it has to kind of be twisted just right and people struggle. And when you struggle, you don't want to do this every day. So I found a way to easily flip this up and we have a complete video, and I'll link it right up here in this top corner of flipping this. When you line up the little dot and that silver dot on the back and give it a little flip, it'll usually get it really close, and if necessary, a little jiggle, and it'll hop right into place. Now I will tell you that will take a little practice, and sometimes you can get it all in one flip, and it just goes in perfect. So just play with that someday. It will get easier the more you do it. Once it's back there correctly, Take the race cover, push firmly on the left side, and then it will lock in place the bobbin case. Go ahead and replace that while you're down here and cut the thread. And I do love that there's actually a light down here shining down, so you do have some helpful illumination. Thank you, Bernina, for that. Close the door. Let's go ahead and put our stitch plate back on. Put the presser foot on you're going to use. I always do that before I put my needle in. That way I have a place to drop my needle into the foot before bringing it straight up. Then I'm not trying to guess where the um, upper part is. And then gently tighten that screw. And I say gently, you need it tight, but you don't need to over tighten it. If you over tighten it, sometimes that gets this area to be, um, not want to hold the needle in. So don't crank it down, just kind of find that happy little twist and re-thread the machine. Do a little stitch out for making sure everything's correct, but also too, by sewing on a sample piece of fabric, if there's a little extra oil, it will sew out, maybe a little grayish, and then just do a couple rows of stitching, and that will make sure that none of the oil or extra oil you put in gets on your fabric, especially if you're gonna be doing something on a white or light colored fabric coming up next.
Ah, it already sounds much quieter than when I started today. So yes, this is something key to get in the habit of doing. One other last little bit of information is to always have your embroidery unit serviced when you have your machine serviced. Now, what if you haven't embroidered this past year and you're wondering, do I really need it serviced? The answer is actually yes. Anything that sits unused, you know how it goes. It just doesn't wanna work as smooth when it just has sat for that long. Things that have lubrication and metal parts, like a car, like your sewing machine, like a lawnmower, those are all things that if they're not kept tuned up and ready to use, they're gonna kind of fight you back. So if you don't wanna have those issues, just find yourself a month that you always take your machine in for service. Maybe that's a time where you have a vacation or you have time to leave it and you're not gonna miss it because you're not home at that time. So just check with with your local Berdina store of when that time should be best. I always say whatever month that you bought your machine in, that's your machine's birthday month. Why not have it serviced each year in that time frame? If you have questions on servicing, your local store can also answer that. Or you could put comments down below in the YouTube comments and we will answer those. But you will find oiling, cleaning on a regular basis is gonna be a solution to so many people's Bernina problems that they have. It's because they haven't taken time to learn and do exactly what I showed you. Here's to lots of smooth stitching because you take care of your machine.